Hey there chemists, in this video we're going to look at neutralization reactions. Neutralization reactions, which are the reactions of an acid and a base. So first let's just look at what designates something as an acid or a base, and then we'll see how to write those reactions. An acid is any species that can give an H plus in a chemical reaction. That's the Bronsted definition of an acid, but it's the one we're going to use more than anything else. For example, if I have the acid hydrochloric acid and I treat it with some base, uh, let's say a source of hydroxide ion, the acid is an acid because it has an H plus ion to give to the base. Even if it's associated with a counter ion at first, it will pop off and react with the base. So in this case, you would get a water molecule and a chloride ion. And we'll learn more about how to write that kind of reaction with all these ions in just a few moments. Some properties of acids, they are sour, they're in foods, and they are made from non-metal oxides. For example, if I have sulfur trioxide, that's a non-metal oxide. You can simply bubble that into a beaker of water and you'll get a synthesis reaction which will create a common acid known as sulfuric acid. That's just where we get them from. The counterpart to this would be bases. Bases don't give H+, bases take H+, in a chemical reaction. That's also the Bronsted definition. There are other definitions that we'll see later on in the year, but for now we're just going to look at the Bronsted. So for example, a very common weak base is known as ammonia. And if I treat that with uh, some acid like hydrofluoric acid, the base, in this case the ammonia, will take an H plus and pick up an extra hydrogen, so I get NH4, but because it's an H+, plus, it actually picks up the positive charge as well. And as a result, you're left with a fluoride ion uh, left over from the HF. Some generic properties of bases, they are not sour, they are bitter. They're in cleaners. And they're made from metal oxides. So an example of a metal oxide might be something like magnesium oxide. And if you treat magnesium oxide with water, you will make a base, specifically magnesium hydroxide. So those are just some generic properties of acids and bases and a little bit about how they react. Now to write reactions between the two, the first thing we need to know is are these acids and bases strong or are they weak? So in the middle of your notes, I have them broken up already into a left-hand side of what are called the strong acids, which are shown here. These are the seven strong acids that I want you to know for this class. Hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid, hydroiodic acid, nitric, sulfuric, chloric, sorry, perchloric, and chloric acid. Good practice would be to go back and write the names of each of those acids next to their respective structures. I'm not going to do that, but that's certainly something you could do. If it's not one of those seven, then it's weak. So a weak acid is all the others, and these are just a few examples in this section. Hydrofluoric acid, nitrous, phosphoric, acetic, and benzoic acid are all examples of weak acids because they are not strong. What about the bases? Well, the strong bases are any metal hydroxide as long as it comes from the first two groups of the periodic table. So lithium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide. Those all count. Alkali hydroxides. Group two also works. So magnesium hydroxide is a strong base. Calcium hydroxide is a strong base, meaning it dissociates completely when we have it in a reaction. What are the weak bases? Well, there are many, 
It's any other metal hydroxide, for example, aluminum hydroxide would be considered a weak base. And then any nitrogen-based compound can usually be considered a base. For example, ammonia, by far the most common example of a weak base. And anything that looks like ammonia, but seems more organic, such as methylamine, CH3, and H2. Those are just a couple of examples of weak bases. Okay, so with those lists, now let's look at how to write reactions involving acids and bases. We can break them up into two categories. Are they involving a strong reactant or all weak components or a mixture of the two? The thing to remember is that strong species dissociate completely. And I'll write that next to it. Completely dissociates. So that will affect how we write it when we include it in the chemical reaction. It's analogous to something being soluble when we were looking at precipitation reactions the other day. So for this first one, I'm just going to start with the chemical formulas. Hydrochloric acid is HCl, and sodium hydroxide is NaOH. But that's actually not the best way to write them. Because they're strong, when I put them in water, they both say aqueous. So when they're in water, before a reaction has even happened, they've completely dissociated, such that hydrochloric acid is actually hydrogen ions and chloride ions. And sodium hydroxide is sodium ions and hydroxide ions. And now I can pair them up as if I'm doing a double replacement reaction and figure out who partners up with who. That's how neutralization reactions work. Well, the H plus is going to leave the chloride and partner up with the hydroxide. So you will make a water molecule. Now, I don't write water dissociated. Water is not a strong acid or a strong base. It's weak with both respects, so I keep it together as a single molecule. The sodium chloride that I form, you might first want to write like that, but sodium chloride is a soluble salt, so I don't pair it up. So I actually have sodium ions and chloride ions, which means if I zoom out and look at the overall reaction, I spy spectator ions. The sodium ion has not changed from the reactants to the products. The chloride ion has not changed from the reactants to the products. So the net reaction is hydrogen ion plus hydroxide ion makes a water molecule. And that's what we write. That's the net ionic for a strong acid and a strong base. In fact, that's always going to be the net ionic when both of the species are strong with just about all the examples that we see. What if one of them is weak? If one of them is weak, it changes how we write it in the beginning. For example, acetic acid. Well, acetic acid is HC2H3O2. And even though it's soluble, it doesn't dissociate. It doesn't break apart into ions. It stays together as one molecule. Potassium hydroxide is a strong base, so I'm going to write it as K plus and OH minus. It's dissociated. And then when I do the reaction, the acetic acid is the H plus donor, so it gives the H plus, which will pair up with the OH minus, so my first product is a water molecule. But I'm not going to write K plus pairing up with acetate. At first, you might do that. But remember, all potassium ion compounds are soluble, and all acetate compounds are soluble. So we write them dissociated. K plus and acetate, C2, H3, O2 minus. So this one also has spectator ions, but there's only one spectator ion in this one. It's the potassium ion. So I cross it out, and then I write acetic acid, HC2, H3O2, plus hydroxide, OH minus, makes water, and acetate, C2, H3O2 minus. That's the net reaction, and that's the correct way to write acetic acid plus potassium hydroxide. I might have been able to get to that a little bit faster if I simply boxed out acetic acid, recognizing that it's weak and it's going to stay together. 
but noticing that potassium hydroxide is not a weak species, it's going to have a spectator of potassium and just hydroxide will be the reactant. So I could have written acetic acid plus hydroxide right from the beginning, and maybe that's a little bit faster. So try that. There's three others that I want you to try turning from words into chemical reactions. Hit pause and try to write the reactions for these three examples and then see how you did. Okay, let's take a look and let's see if we can even use a couple of shortcuts with these. So the first one, lithium hydroxide, that's a strong base and it has the spectator ion of lithium. So lithium is not going to be in the net reaction, but hydroxide will be. Hydrochloric acid, sorry, hydrocyanic acid, that's a weak acid. So the whole thing stays together as a molecule. And now I know how to start writing my reactants and I can already skip that final step. So hydroxide is OH minus. Hydrocyanic acid is HCN. The acid HCN will give up its H plus to the OH minus and become a water molecule. And then the leftover is cyanide, CN minus. Notice it's balanced. It happens to be one to one to one to one, but there's the same number of element on each side. And even the charge is balanced. We have a net minus one in the reactants and a net minus one in the products. If I do the same thing for the second one, Acetic acid is weak, so I'm going to keep it together. But sodium hydroxide is strong, and the sodium ion will be a spectator. So for this one, we have acetic acid, HC2H3O2, plus hydroxide, OH minus, will become a water molecule. And what's left over? Acetate. It's the same as the example we did a moment ago up above, just with a different strong base. C2H3O2 minus, there we go. So we have acetic acid plus hydroxide, makes water, and acetate. Again, everything's balanced with a one-to-one -one ratio. When you get to the third one, there's a little bit of a trick you got to watch out for. You might first box out just hydroxium, uh, hydroxide and potassium, but that would actually be incorrect. Because it's solid, we keep it together. If it's aqueous and it's strong, it can dissociate. But if it's solid, there's nothing to dissociate into. So we keep it together when it's solid. So my first reactant is indeed KOH. The second reactant is strong. Hydrochloric acid is a strong acid, and it's really only the hydro part, the H plus chloride will be a spectator, but if you're not seeing that, we can prove it. It's a strong acid, so I write it dissociated, hydrogen ion and chloride ion, and then the reaction would say that the H plus ion sees the OH minus ion, so I make a water molecule, and then I still have a, a chloride ion and a potassium ion but if I were to pair those up, those are not insoluble. They would stay dissociated because potassium salts are soluble. So I write them as dissociated ions, K plus and Cl minus. And this one also has spectators. It's the chloride. The chloride goes away. So your net ionic would actually be if you got rid of that chloride completely on the right-hand side and the left-hand side. And that would be a correct net ionic for the solid KOH reacting with a strong acid to give you water and potassium ion. Notice the way we write the formula gives us information about the state. It's implied that the state is aqueous if we just leave it as an ion.